Good morning. This is a very rainy morning and I'm here with Geraldine to talk about investing, how it leads to career choices and the role women play in this world. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on investing. Geraldine, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having me, Darren. Can you please tell us a bit more about yourself? Alright, hi everyone, my name is Geraldine and if you have trouble pronouncing my last name, it's actually Pia. So the easy way to remember is the famous Hokkien song. So I Pia Zai, yeah, so that's the, the, the way you pronounce um, Pia. And just a little bit about myself, I'm actually Darren's colleague. So we both work in the same company, but coincidentally we are both also content creators. Just that he focuses more on like Tesla and investing. And as for myself, I focus a lot more on topics that matters to millennials. So I cover four key topics primarily, work, money, relationships as well as health and really excited to be here to share you know my, my own knowledge and experiences with, with all of you. And it takes effort for Geraldine to be here on a Sunday morning braving the rain here <laughs> together with me we feel the results and it's just like investing a lot of people know that investing is good but then we have a lot of inertia what made you start investing? All right so you know that's a question that I get very often right how do you actually begin on your journey because for many of the uh, younger Singaporeans or millennials who graduate from school, they'll find investing to be a very complex topic, especially when they did not um, study like any kind of financial topics in school. I'm, I'm sure yeah, you can relate, right, um, coming from a more accounting type of background. Then again, for accounting to investing is like somewhat, um, you know, kind of related, I guess. One small step. Again, yeah, with that said, a lot of accountants step. still do not invest. <laughs> so for myself, I actually came from a journalism background. So you can imagine like, you know, when I graduated, it was such a steep learning curve. But what really motivated me was three things. So first of all, I think for me, I had the right like um, up, um, environment. Uh, and I grew up in an environment whereby my father's an entrepreneur. Mm. So since young, I have been you know, constantly fed the message that oh, investing is important. I have to do it when I graduate. So there's no like question about whether I should or should not. I knew I had to do it. And subsequently, there were two other push factors or so. So the second one is actually love. Ah. Yeah, because uh, back then when I first graduated from school, I was in love with a guy and we wanted to settle down. Ah. But at the same time, my starting salary was really bad. Like, so I've said this number publicly before and I can share it with you. My starting salary was 2800 per month. That's the base salary. Of mm. course, I have commissions and all that. But you can imagine like the stress I felt when I looked at like housing prices and all that versus like my current um, income. So I yeah. knew I had to invest to, to like, accelerate it. And the third factor that pushed me uh, even further was like, I think it was in one of my jobs earlier jo earlier on, I was actually in a more toxic work environment whereby, you know, um, the environment wasn't great oh. and, you know, people were leaving very often and all that. But for me, I could not leave mm. because like I had this goal to, you know, want to settle down, right? So I had to focus, you know, on work and, you know, it's really a, really a feeling that I do not like because yeah. like I feel like I'm being forced to go to work every morning by myself oh. and there's no freedom. So I realized like if I were to accelerate my wealth growth, um, that would provide me freedom, right? And to be able to make my own choices and really glad to be uh, where I am today at a stage of life whereby I will not be trapped in a, this kind of environment anymore. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Geraldine. I also feel that you share these three aspects of your life, your dad as you go growing mm -hmm. up, that love and also the workplace experience. Part of it also is the adversity, the challenges spur us to start investing because mm -hmm. we realize that when people change when the pain of not changing exceeds the pain of changing. Yes. Now, if some, someone like, they just graduate from NTU, they got a good, good school and maybe they end up in one of the big four, let's say like a PwC, earning 4K per month, mm -hmm. every year getting a promotion, mm -hmm. they will feel, my life is okay, I don't mm -hmm. need to invest. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say to our friends in that situation? Your life is... I mean, good for you, first of all, congratulations uh, that you had like a good starting salary yeah. and like, you know, you're getting steady promotions every year. But the thing is that like, regardless of your, um, you know, steady promotions and all that, it's still good to invest because if you keep your money in like a bank, like a very like old account that you use when you're a kid, often the interest is not really good um, versus what you could potentially get in the market. So why not like, you know, let your money work for you while you work hard as well. And that's the hard part for many of us, right? Because people tell us to invest one day, you should learn from Warren Buffett. But it's kind of like telling <laughs> every Singaporean, go swim, one day you'll be Joseph Schooling. And they would be like, yeah. there's a very large gap in between <laughs> where I am today and Joseph Schooling. And even when we choose to start investing, it still seems very male-skewed. Mm. Even though both 
male and female get the same education, get the same accounting uh, school, get the same exposure to YouTube channels. How come it's still so male skewed here mm. in Singapore? Um, I'm not sure if you just here in Singapore, but also for the rest of the world as well. Because when I was looking at some numbers, it does seem that there's more, more male investors than female ones. And when I try to think about the reasons, one of it that uh, comes to mind is actually the historical reasons. So if you think about women, um, you know, two generations ago, or even for many people whose mums are housewife, um, it's like one generation ago, their role was more focused at, on domestic affairs. Mm. Right? Even if they were educated, they, they went to school, it, the responsibilities of a woman is still very focused on home. Like, example in Hokkien, right? Like to say, uh, to describe a wife is called Keao, so it's like Jia Ho, st uh, standing at the back of the house. So, you know, really like um, focus more on domestic chores. Mm. It's only with our generation whereby things really started to pick up and women started to enter the workforce. Hence, when we look at our maybe mom or grandma, there isn't that kind of like female role models to learn from, right? Whereas yeah. for men, like for me, I look at my father and like other people who's, who have uh, fathers who invest also or male role models like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, that gives them an idea of like, okay, this is possible for, for me. So role models are exceptionally important and also historical reasons was the another one that I, I covered as well. And it sounds like again, parents play such a big role. Mm. I've got more and more friends in Singapore now, parents like young daughter and son and say, okay, I'm giving you a thousand dollars, you got to invest in a stock or you're going to invest in a set of equities, pick something, almost like just to create that habit. Mm. Yeah, parents and encourage that. I think a generation ago, that would be very, very rare. Yeah. It's more common now. Yeah, correct. And the barriers to entry to just start investing is a lot easier. How is your investing portfolio right now? What does it look like? Okay, so just to, to lay up our friend, uh, what I share is not like, um, you no know, going investment to be, advice. Yeah, not investment advice, because everyone's life circumstances is different, which determines their approach to asset allocation. Yeah. For myself, uh, I'm 32, so I would consider my portfolio allocation to be more conservative for someone my age. Mm. Um, I basically have 27% in cash, and everything else is in a couple of things. I have a bit in bonds, then there's equities, um, private credit. As well as uh, property, I guess you can call property. Although I, I feel property is more like a place to live versus like an <laughs> investment. Yeah. And again, having cash helps us, especially in rainy days like this, yes. where we need to pivot our strategy. So we're going to go ahead, get some shelter, okay. and we will continue this <laughs> yeah. very shortly. That's why you need cash. Yeah. Property, not a liquid asset. Yeah? So yeah. be careful. If it rains, it's stuck here. Yeah, <laughs> See you another scene. We're back under shelter with a much more orange glow, <laughs> like a certain former US president. <laughs> and so let's continue our conversation about that portfolio. So you've got that portfolio, it's more, a bit more conservative, so definitely more wealth uh, preservation versus growth at this stage. Now. I wouldn't rule that out totally, right? As long as you're investing in something, like it does increase uh, and beat inflation. So I would say it's a mix of, of both. And I do have equities as well. Uh, yeah. How long have you been investing for? Uh, I started investing since about 2016 or 17. Yeah. So a long time, yeah, almost eight years. There must be many lessons. What are your key takeaways? Well, there are quite a lot of things that I've learned from um, my investing journey. And the first one, I believe, is that don't try to time the market, right? Because it's really impossible to predict. Like, no one could have predicted that February 2024 was going to be such a blowout month. Yes. And no one could have predicted that 2023 was a good, was a bull market, actually, right? Great year. Yeah, it was a great year. Mm. So. There's really no um, no way to predict, you know, the ups and downs, and even those people who are predicting the news and trying to make forecasts, despite working in finance, they are typically wrong. So that's why, rather than trying to time the market, um, it's more important to really focus on like you know finding good quality businesses mm. and then double down on on them, um, and just make, have a very consistent approach, right? So. Having said that, uh, recognizing that this world is unpredictable and I can never predict the direction of the stock price, I just choose a more straightforward method, which is the dollar cost averaging. Mm. For me, I do it every quarter instead uh. of every month because every month takes too much like effort from me, so I do it on a quarterly basis. I fully agree. Time in market beats timing the market. Uh, it's easy to say that we invest in companies with strong fundamentals. Nowadays, you see a lot of our friends saying, yeah, I've been a long-term investor in NVIDIA, I believe in the fundamentals. Now here, I am as someone who is a Tesla investor saying that I believe in the company's fundamentals and the stock has been flat for the past three years. It, it is still down about half from this all-time high of $400. If one day the stock price gets another surge like in 2020 when it went up 7x, kind of like what happened to Nvidia the past couple of months, then it's easy to say that I was a long-term investor. So I think part of it is 
building your own conviction, mm -hmm. but conviction cannot be borrowed. It has to be built from within. Mm -hmm. And that means, especially if you invest in riskier assets or equity, mm -hmm. that you will have your moments of doubts. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that? Um, like, how do I manage the moments? Your own doubts, yeah. Yeah. What, what I found very useful when it comes to doubt management is to really, like, before I... First of all, recognize and accept investing as risk. So even if I do all my homework, right, something could happen, right? Like, the CEO suddenly get fired, or, like, um, the business doesn't perform as it should, and there's so many things that are beyond my control. So instead of that, I focus on my own, the things that I can control instead. So now before I invest in a fund, a stock, I try to write it down, like write my reasons down. Because writing actually is a way to promote clear thinking, right? Yes. And to ensure that I've covered all grounds and I do not miss out on any blind spots. <laughs> yeah, that actually helps me to really ensure that, you know, even if things do not work out my way, I know that I have done my best to cover what I could. Mm. Write it down, it's a good mental exercise, it's a good forcing mechanism to really ask yourself, do I really believe in what I'm thinking? Because seeing it in words feels real. Yes. What lessons do you have or what message do you have for people who are thinking about investing? That that journey is so daunting. Where do I start? Um, I think what is the most what has worked for me um, a lot is I think not first of all, I think there are a couple of ways that you can um, get educated on a space that you are unfamiliar with. So number one is actually to really uh, consider taking a course mm. because having someone to teach you and guide you like a formal lesson could be a way for yourself to get educated about a subject. Otherwise, if you are not the type of person who likes to attend courses, um, there are many other avenues out there like YouTube channels and also um, there are communities you can get involved in. Mm. For example, when I was trying to learn about personal finance as a fresh graduate, I joined the Sydney personal finance community mm. on Facebook. Back then when I had Facebook, it was very, very helpful because any questions that I post, I would get answers. It was a non-judgmental environment and they were really put, putting a lot of content that were very useful for fresh graduates. Um, furthermore, when I was actually interested in angel investing and wanted to explore that space, I also joined like uh, angel syndicates, right? Um, with, to, to just learn about like how um, they are thinking about you know angel investing and all that. But eventually decided not to go ahead with, with um, angel investing as a whole. Yeah. Mm. Well, what I'm hearing from you, Geraldine, is that you had peers, you were not doing this alone. Mm. Yeah, there are communities out there yeah. and in today's digital world, it's easier to be in touch with people. Of course, what's harder is finding someone to trust mm. and you've got to make up your own judgment. So there's so many voices out there. How do you decide what to listen to? Um, yes, that, that, you are right. There's a lot of uh, noise noise out there, right? So when you when you go on YouTube, for example, it's very easy to follow like the and, and listen to the sexiest person who get like uh, gains within like one month, uh, one day, right? And like mm. keep focusing on that. So for me, I, myself, what I try to do is avoid anything short term because I do not believe that there are any shortcuts when it comes to wealth building. So anyone who talks about like, oh, within one month I got this and all yeah. that. I would try to avoid that because I know that they are sensationalizing things for views and not necessarily doing things in the best interest of the, the audience. I'm sure you have seen many mm. examples and, and, and can relate to what I'm sharing as well. Um, another thing I like to look at is also maybe perhaps maybe track record mm. because everyone can talk a big game, right? Everyone can say they have stopped performing well in the past two years, of course, because of, I mean, past year, sorry, 2023 and this, this month. Because rising tide will lift all the boats, right? Boats. Yeah, it's only when the, as more buffers say, only when the tide goes down, then you know who actually is swimming naked. True. Yeah. There are so many voices mm. and we always hear all these big success stories. Success is celebrated and failures and often. Mm. And we talked about this before filming also that not everyone, especially below 40s, should be just entirely focused on investing. Our day job or our source of income is still important as well. Do you want to tell us a bit more about your philosophy here? Yeah, I, re I recognize that there's a lot of uh, young people out there who suddenly got very interested in investing because, and I can I understand where this comes from, right? Because you look at like the high cost of living versus like your salary is not growing as fast. And it's very easy to, you know, want to look for a shortcut to reduce that gap. Um, the thing is that when you are maybe perhaps under 40, at least for, well, this is what I believe, and feel free to challenge in the comments if you feel that, you know, that's another perspective. I find that the main source of wealth for many people actually comes from careers, right? Like building your career capital, performing well at work, getting the good bonuses, commissions, and all that. So more of one's attention could be placed on that. 
Okay, a very easy example. The revolution is easier to, to do. Is it easier to get a 20k per annum pay raise or 20k gain in the stock market? Definitely the second. Second one, stock yeah. market? Really? Yeah. For me, I have felt that it was much easier to get a... In, in, from a per perception standpoint, because they feel like you just click a few buttons and there's a chance to get it. Yeah, 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 there's okay. no guarantee, but there's a chance to get it. Yeah. Getting a 20k per year pay increase, you don't know, no? you got your performance rating, you got yeah. your peers, but will you that be later? You change jobs, ma. Don't, don't underestimate the gains you can get when you are changing job at an early career stage before mm. the, the past, um, you know, before, in, in the first, first few years. Yeah. Mm. I think that's a more steady path and that's going to be a path that works for more people. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to investing, there are no, it's less guaranteed compared to, if you know you're doing a good job, generally, you'll be on the right track, at least in the first 20 years of your career. Yep. Mm. To add on, I always feel that the best investment one can make, right, is actually on themselves. And this is something Warren Buffett has shared many times yeah. uh, in his like speeches. The thing is that, let's say, for example, you lose your YouTube channel tomorrow, somebody hack it and mm. everything's gone. I'm very confident you can rebuild it, right, because you have the skill set and the knowledge and the um, know-how, right, you know what to do, right? So that's something no one can ever take away from you, because yes. things like skills and knowledge. Therefore, I find that, you know, while learning to invest is important, it should not be everything. Mm. The main source of investment should always be on yourself as a human and the skills that you have, the networks that you build. To me, at least, these are more sustainable and long-lasting. Yeah. I agree. We've learned a lot from your messages here, Geraldine. One last question I have for you is, and we talk about it off camera as well, is what's your why behind investing? Investing is a means to an end. What's the end for you? Yeah, so many people tend to look at like, um, investing as a way to build wealth, right? Yeah. And the thing is that if we, if, if one makes like wealth like an end goal, sometimes that loses sight of the, that makes them lose sight of the biggest, bigger picture in place. So for me, my, the, the reason why I'm focusing on like wealth building and taking care of my finances is because I do consider um, that, you know, there are other aspects of my life that require this um, support. And those will, those other aspects will always be my priority. It will not be wealth itself. Mm -hmm. So it's very important in the pursuit of wealth and growth to always maintain a bigger picture into the other aspects. And for me, the other aspects that I care about will be like health, mm -hmm. uh, building deep, meaningful relationships, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing a job I enjoy, giving back to the community, right? And, constantly growing. These are things that matter a lot more to me that I'll be more willing to spend on. Yeah. It sounds like wealth is an enabler for you to just make the most of the rest of your life, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. It creates, gives us op options and choices. It doesn't, it doesn't create happiness. It provides the opportunity for those moments to happen. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. You can follow Geraldine. You'll find her social links down in the video description. Mm -hmm. And if you found this video useful, please click the like button and hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on investing. Thank, Thank you. you so much.